What got me interested into filmmaking? Uh, I remember I was seven years old, and to me, I don't really know what the spark was, but I was seven, and I realized there was more to film than just the actors. I started to realize there was, you know, people were behind the camera, so obviously, you know, there was obviously lighting, special effects, etc. So ever since I was seven, I just, I don't know what it was, I just thought, oh, this is really cool, how do you make stories and tell stories that are so interesting and, you know, things can be, you know, fresh and unique and it was, it was really from there, so ever since I was seven, um, the first director I really took notice of was actually Mel Brooks because his sense of humour, like, timing and how he just inspired, you know, generations and you know, dozens and hundreds of people to, you know, want to try to be similar to him. It was, he was the first director I really took notice of and I kind of wanted to be like him. But who are my influences? Um, in terms of acting, I always thought Johnny Depp was the greatest actor of all time. Uh, his acting, how he just immerses himself into every role, yeah, and it's completely unrecognisable. I just, he was a, he was a, big acting idol of mine. Uh, writing was uh, Joss Whedon, you know, writing Toy Story, Buffy, Angel, The Avengers, that was always, like, I followed his career ever since I was from a young age and thought, how can you write scripts so quickly? I mean, he wrote Cabin in the Woods when he was in three days, I think it was. Uh, apart from that, like, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Mel Brooks, I touched on him before. He's a uh, it's incre incredibly funny, but it's all kind of everything, and you sort of take bits and pieces from everything, from, you know, Pixar movies or superhero movies and action movies, really anything. I had such a broad sense of um, you know, what I liked in film that basically a bit of everything inspires me, and I never want to be locked in one box, so my influences are a bit of everyone, from Quentin Tarantino, Mel Brooks, Joss Whedon, uh, obviously, you have to mention George Lucas and Steven Spielberg as well. Tim Burton was another really big one. Um, how you can do that sort of dark kookiness in every film, yet not be a straightforward horror film, but have that really unique flavour, like everyone knows what a Tim Burton movie is as soon as you see it. Uh, on set uh, training, what training have I had in film? Uh, apart from university, um, I had a really amazing, I had a, an amazing mentor at university called Glenn Fraser, who, no relation, but he, he has been a mentor and guide for me for the last five years, both at uni and then since I finished university, he's become a very good friend of mine. Uh, he always keeps me on track, so he's one. Uh, another bit of training I had is, uh, I did a screenwriter's school with Michael Lucker who is an established screenwriter who wrote the movie Spirit and Vampire in Brooklyn, um, starring Eddie Murphy. He also taught me screenwriting two years ago. I did a course with him and he sort of steered me in the right direction. And uh, those, are, those are the two people who really helped guide me in my writing the most. Um, besides that, I'm just reading a lot of books. Save the Cats, a classic. So is... Uh, Crash Bang Boom, uh, story, uh, yeah, those were those were my my training, and that's how I sort of moulded how my screenwriting style. My first film at uni that I did when I had complete creative control was called The Morning Shift. But outside of uni, my first short film I did was called lockdown porn which was a parody of modern medicine and the porn industry adjusting to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, it was a comedy mockumentary style um, but I actually shot that at the same time as another short film called A Grim Tale which was about a guy whose girlfriend is killed by the Grim Reaper and everyone around him thinks he's going crazy but he ha finds that he has a finite amount of time where he can bring his girlfriend back to life, but he has to confront the Grim Reaper first. Uh, what I'm working on at the moment is 
I'm focusing now on giving back to a lot of my friends. I wouldn't be where I am today and I have to mention this person in particular. I have to mention uh, my producing partner and one of my best friends, Joe Manning. He's been with me by my side as my DP and associate producer um, for everything I've done. You know, I, I have to mention him. Uh, so I'm now working on uh, helping him get his short films now off the, off the ground. Uh, but besides that, I'm currently, I've written the first draft of a feature film called Quarter Life. Uh, it takes place in Newcastle and my goal is to hopefully my short films that I've done here in Newcastle will win some sort of accolades and credits that I can then parlay that success into saying, hey, I've done a, I've written a feature film here that takes place in Newcastle that could employ Newcastle people and hopefully that will um, you know, build a stronger community of actors and creatives. You know, I'm all about giving back to the community because filmmaking is a collaborative effort. Like whether it's I'm the director or not, you know, you can't do it by yourself. So I'm all about creating a community of people who share similar um, s similar interests and yeah, that's that's what I'm working on at the moment is hopefully getting a feature film off the ground. I made a deal with myself when I was 13 years old that I would direct my first feature film by the time I was 30. So I'm 27 now, so I have three more years to go before it has to come out. So I've still got a little bit of time.